Hello and wel welcome to MasterShareTrading.com market recap for the week ending Friday, May 1st, 2015. This week, S&P 500 held support in the 2077 area for now and then rebounded pretty strongly on Friday. We will also look at small caps as they broke support and triggered a sell signal. Worldwide bond sales sold off pretty hard and TLT, the Treasuries Fund, broke second support. Gold turned very volatile and it tested both the resistance and the support in the same week. Um, also, we look at Newmont Mining as it becomes one of the market leaders. Dollar may be ready for a rebound and uh, with it may be another uh, strong move in oil and possibly natural gas. Okay, let's look at the S&P 500. So S&P 500 candlestick chart. Um, the important feature of this chart is, is a bullish chart. <clears throat> the 50-day moving average is above the 200-day moving average and the prices are moving from lower left to the upper right. So uh, this Thursday we had a pretty strong sell-off and the price actually touched uh, the 2077 right there in this area. And you can see that there was support here from the previous low in uh, mid-April. And on Thursday it touched in the same area and the next day it gapped up and then rebounded and closed above even yesterday's high. You can see that also this is a 50-day moving average, this red line right there. And uh, Thursday, you can see it closed below it, and then the next day the buyers stepped in and pushed the prices right back up. So this is pretty much uh, shows that uh, the um, you know bull market is alive and well in the uh, large cap at the very least. Um, now, as far as the market breadth for this particular chart, uh, again I went over last time. And I don't see any major divergences just yet. Um, we did put in a uh, an all-time closing high, I believe, here. Um, the last, um, let's see, when is this? Right there in April, in last week on April on 24th, I believe, here. But the, you can see that the advanced decline line actually kind of trended lower, and it's still not did not catch up with the high in the S&P 500 itself. So there is a slight bearish divergence here that I see. The prices are slightly moving slightly up while the advanced decline line of participation basically is uh, slightly uh, waning a little bit. You can see the same thing is appearing in the uh, breadth momentum. You can see that breadth momentum rolled over below its then the exponential moving average right there and right there. So we're definitely um, seeing some signs of um, just not a lot of signs of buying pressure, but I don't see too many signs of selling pressure just yet. And again, this, I highlighted this um, divergence in the unbalanced volume as well. You can see it's pretty clear here actually. Now, again, I don't know if this is uh, something that will actually play out because divergence is notorious for not playing out. Next is the uh, Russell 2000 iShares, the small cap index. And this was one of the market leaders uh, for a while now, since mid-February at least. You can see the SCTR, stock chart technical rank, was, uh, you know, even above 90 at a certain point here. And it actually put on a, just a stellar performance here in February and April and parts and parts of April, but then it just kind of collapsed. And you can see right there, there's a gap below the 50-day moving average and the nasty selling uh, that took place on Thursday. Today we did see a little bit of a rebound, you know, 0.65 percent, but. Um, since we're so far, well, relatively far below the 50-day moving average, uh, we are not nearly as strong as uh, S&P 500. You can see the S&P 500, I'll go, I'll go went back for a second, closed below the 50 and then immediately powered back up. Here, 
not nearly as strong. And the uh, market breadth, of course, uh, is, is a little bit weaker. I mean, you can see the advanced decline line. There is not divergence, not a divergence in the advanced decline line. But uh, the momentum of the breadth is uh, started to weaken as far back as the uh, mid-April, even earlier here as well. So um, definitely uh, something to watch, uh, but most likely a support will be found, maybe not here, but definitely around here somewhere. So um, unless something dramatic happens, I think the rebound is coming relatively soon. And then the next chart I'll show, um, this is our uh, market timing charts that we use. And on it, uh, you can see the sell signal was generated on April 29th, but uh, you could probably exit even earlier, maybe on the 28th even. Uh, and then since then, so far, I don't see a buy signal. You can see a buy signal right there, right there, right there. But so far, I don't see a buy signal, even with today's uh, modest rebound. Okay, next is bonds. Treasury bond fund, TLT, 20 plus years yearly treasury bond fund, kind of like a proxy for the bond market. And um, you can see SCTR, which is stock shares stock technical rank, which ranks uh, all of the ETFs, uh, non-leveraged ETFs within the universe uh, against each other. And you can see it really weakened. You can see it's at 18 right now. Um, it was above 90 just a few weeks ago, a few months ago, and it really just collapsed here. So um, you can see first there was an all-time high, but then a lower low was put in and then it was confirmed by this breakdown here. So first we had, you know, we had this support break and now on Thursday I thought you know, this candlestick looked kind of bullish and I thought, oh, great, we look like we held support here from from these uh, February and March lows, but I don't think we did and it looks like we closed below the support here on Friday. So um, I think next stop would be uh, this 122 level and you can see that this is a, a low from the March and that 200 day moving average that are coming in around this area. And I think that, um, you know, the bulls, uh, bond bulls really need to step in here and at least hold support uh, to prevent, you know, on all complete collapse in the bond market. Um, I think, you know, for now, uh, bonds are still bullish. So I'm looking, I would be more apt to look for a buying opportunities. Um, but the thing is that you can see with this SCTR weakening, there are probably better um, opportunities to invest your money. In, you know, it will just depend how uh, strongly the rebound uh, will be. And rebound will likely come soon as well. Uh, next is the market timing chart for TLT. And uh, here you can see um, a sell signal being generated on April 22nd right there. So, and then actually that's when we exited the market. We, we, we had a position open since March 11, uh, and then we exited here in April 22nd. And then for now, again, no buy signal just yet. Uh, I don't see a good, good entry opportunity just yet. And uh, for comparison, um, when I, I, looked, I looked up a 10-year German treasury yield, and um, this this bond sell-off uh, was really worldwide, and it looks like even in Germany, where um, ten-year Treasury yield was basically at zero, zero point zero eight percent, since April twentieth, when it was basically at zero uh, until today. Look at this! Look at this rise. It's three hundred sixty percent rise. So it was for zero point zero eight, and it became zero point three seven. That's a very significant rise in just you know two weeks. So it looks like the bonds are sold off, uh, not just in the in United States, but worldwide as well, or at the very least in Europe. Uh, you know, so that's a pretty significant sell off here. All right.
right, next is um, gold on the agenda. So gold is uh, very volatile this week. Um, looks like I, I thought last uh, week that looks like we're breaking down and I actually went ahead and opened the short and I'll, I'll show in the next chart where it happened. But this chart, I just wanted to show that how volatile gold was this week. Today, um, or rather in the middle of the week, it rallied almost to resistance right there. One, two, one, four, you know, it basically went almost as far as resistance. And then on Friday, it retested support. You can see right there on Friday. It, it was already below this uh, 1174 mark that it just put in recently. So it, was, it, it retested both the support and the resistance in the same week. It's just like a very rough ride. So unfortunately, um, I did get whipsawed out uh, and I had to cover my short in GDXJ. Um, I'll show on the next chart, this is GDX, it's pretty much the same thing, uh, similar to GDXJ. But um, I went ahead and opened the short on April 22nd and then was forced to cover it on the 28th. So in other words, I respected the um, uh, price and I, I did not you know, question it. Um, so you can see on the market timing chart for GLD, I went back a little bit, um, same thing, you know, we went ahead and opened a, a short right there, oh, sorry, on, the, on April 22nd, right there, but then the price just turned around and it was a whipsaw, uh, so we were forced to cover. And the same thing in, you know, GDX, um, let me just show you, similar thing, uh, April 22nd, there was a short signal, we went ahead and took it. But the next, uh, just a few days later, in the 28th, we're forced to cover. So th this will happen, and um, you know, it's basically one of those things where you have to control your uh, position size. And in one of the next videos for the um, future subscribers, I will uh, go over position sizing in details. Okay, so this is a uh, chart, a candlestick chart of the. GDX, the gold miners ETF. So, first of all, it's a bearish chart. You can see that um, the 50 day moving average is below the 200 day moving average, and the prices are generally moving from the upper left to the lower right. Um, also, uh, you know, a big feature of this chart is uh, this very sharp collapse. From uh, in the mid -mar in, in March, and then a rising wedge. So this looks like a rising wedge, and uh, ra wedge is rising until proven otherwise. With uh, you know it itself, rising prices are bullish, but once a breakdown occurs, it becomes uh, a bearish pattern. So I'm looking at a breakdown somewhere. Depending on where the price will be when the break uh, when the break occurs, I'm looking for a breakdown maybe around here in 1975 area, and I'm looking for a close below this um, wedge line. Now again, we're also rapidly approaching uh, resistance area where there's a 200-day moving average, and then there is also this peak from the uh, late February as well. So um, this would be a uh, definitely a good place for GDX to roll over as it did right there for example. It closed above the 200 day and then pretty much rolled over afterwards. It hasn't happened yet and once again basically here I thought that the breakdown did occur but it did not. It, it, I, was, I was forced to cover right here. And uh, as you know, I highlighted the market breadth for gold miners in the past is bearish as well. You can see that there is a bearish bearish divergences in the advanced decline line, advanced decline percent, uh, and volume percent, and unbalanced volume as well. You know, prices are making higher lows, while the underlying advanced decline lines are making lower lows. You can see that uh, bullish percent index did improve somewhat, so it's now in the 40s. Um, and 
Um, it's possible that we're kind of seeing similar picture as in here. You know, we went up to 50, stayed there for a little while, and then broke down. So uh, we'll see if that's indeed the case. And uh, I also occasionally, or rather, I, not occasionally, I always ask myself, is my analysis really correct? What, what, what will it take to prove me wrong? And um, one of the things that I looked at um, is the composition of GDX, and Newmont Mining is one of the major players in GDX. And you can see that GD, uh, Newmont Mining is pretty, you know, it's been pretty strong. And um, the important thing is the SCTR structure technical rank actually is above 90 now, it's at 96. So this is one of the stronger stocks within the S&P 500. And then Newman is, I believe, within the S&P 500 large cap index. So, you know, this is something to keep in mind. In other words, if you go short on GDX, you'll be also short in the Newman uh, as a part of the GDX as well. Here, you can see the volume, unbalanced volume is positive and the price, price is making higher highs and the uh, unbalanced volume is also making higher highs. So uh, one of the stronger uh, stocks within GDX. Now, um, the dollar. I think part of the reason why this whole thing was uh, rebound with uh, gold and other commodities have started is because it appears that um, dollar has put in at least possibly a double top here or or you know we don't know at this point if it's going to be indeed a double top and but uh, it looks that way for now and uh, looks like from here from uh, March 16th uh, it's been dropping pretty you know steadily more or less with a small rebound here but um, you know it's already oversold you can see this MACD is already in a negative territory and since this is a bullish security um, people who are um, long-term bullish on the dollar will be looking for a re-entry opportunity uh, to go long again and um, it looks like it may already started to uh, make a start to make a stand here in the $24.80 area $24.90 area uh, next week, if if it doesn't uh, continue lower, uh, we may see a rebound. And um, usually, if dollar rebounds, the commodities will fall, and that includes um, oil, dollar, uh, oil and um, gold, and other commodities as well. As far as the market timing is concerned, for uh, UUP dollar bullish fund. You can see a sell signal occurred right there on April 27th for us, but so far I don't see any uh, entry opportunities just yet. I don't see a good uh, buying uh, buy, good buying signal just yet. And uh, let's uh, look at um, light crude oil spot price as well. So uh, I showed UUP. This is a I won't go, went back to you, power shares dollar index trust. You can he, see here uh, on, in mid March, dollar made a uh, pretty much a top here, and then since then it was sliding down. So this is about, I believe, uh, a little bit over six percent drop right there for the dollar. But over the same exact time, you can see the March 16, uh, yeah, March 16, 17 low here, and then since then pretty much oil did nothing but go up and this is about a little bit over 40 percent rise in price of oil so it's pretty significant and uh, dollar and um, commodities have uh, more or less negative correlation so you can see here that um, oil yesterday closed above resistance and then today it held support you can see this uh, uh, shadow at the bottom. So um, what I'm thinking, my thinking right now is if the dollar uh, rebounds, uh, most likely oil will take a nosedive. And if it does, I will be looking for, and the next chart I'll show USO, 
United States oil fund, which I use for market timing. So it was a very good uh, short signal right here on February 10th. This would have resulted in about 16% drop or other gain for you if you're shorting. So for now, actually, there was no short signal just yet. It was a straight shot just up, 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 no stop, no stop. So if the dollar does decide to uh, rebound, um, I will be looking to short oil um, if the signal is given. And I have not seen a signal just yet for oil. And as far as targets uh, for oil, I'm looking if the if the signal is given, uh, most likely the price would be already around 57, maybe around here, seven and a half. So I'm looking to at least play it to the downside to the $55 area, possibly lower to the 50 uh, day moving average, and possibly even lower. You know, it depends on how strong the dollar rebounds and um, if the supply of oil and all that is um, bearish for the oil price. All right, and finally, I will look at natural gas. So uh, again, similar thing as with oil. Well, natural gas is even more bearish than uh, oil itself. Um, you can see that there was pretty much nothing but downtrend since uh, at least December here. But you can see here, it was a really good week for natural gas. Uh, it pretty much rallied all week and closed above the 50-day moving average on Thursday and on Friday. So this is quite, you know, quite impressive for uh, natural gas. And unless we see something similar to this, you hear it also closed above 50 and then the next day just uh, collapsed here and then we saw a nice move down. Uh, unless we see something similar next week, Monday or Tuesday, um, we may see a continued rebound in natural gas prices. And uh, the first logical level to look for um, the resistance, of course, would be around here at 286 and then uh, at 305. So uh, if you're a goal, uh, if you're a natural gas bull, then uh, possibly. Uh, those are not a bad targets for uh, at least taking some profits. And interestingly enough, you can see that we had a bullish divergence in the unbalanced volume. You can see the price dropped lower while the unbalanced volume kind of made a higher low. So that's kind of like a first sign that um, there was kind of like a bottom in prices inside here. All right. Um, that's it for this week. Let me show you how to find us on the internet. Please go to MasterChefsTrading.com. Uh, we have a blog video section and also we're about to start trade alert services. So please do sign up for our mailing list and uh, you'll be the first um, in line to receive a special promotional price once our services are live. And uh, also if you have um, any of the uh, if you follow, you can follow us along on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or StockTwits accounts. Most of the charts that you see in, in this presentation are located right here in the public charts page uh, at messagehousetrading.com. All right, uh, that's it for this week recap. Thanks for watching and have another great trading week. Bye-bye.